Hi fasters, um, I'm back again and I'm back in the fasting game. It's day seven, I've just finished day seven of a fast, uh, water fast for the most part. Um, but in fact I've just finished two days uh, dry fasting um, which involved, as, as the name implies, no water, no food. And I did that because in my last video, uh, the or last playlist, which was called uh, Optimistically uh, the Complete Fast, I completely failed. But I did learn something, and that was that the nausea that led me to eat to break my fast day, I think the beginning, the night from day six into day seven, can largely be eliminated if you mix up the fast with a little bit of dry fasting and um, water fasting. The dry fasting is fantastic. Oh, look, it's quite a challenge. I started, I actually started this seven days with what turned out to be almost a dry fast for the first two days. But in fact, I had, uh, well, I had a cup of coffee both days and uh, I think one other glass of water for those two days. So I called them um, D divided by two in my little record uh, to indicate that they were half dry fasts. But then it's t today is Sunday and I didn't have anything for the last, any, any liquid at all, any fluids at all for uh, 48 hours. And that really helped me at that crunch time day six and day seven when I felt the nausea last time I did, whereas I felt the nausea last time I didn't feel it at all this time I felt great uh, dry fasting is another whole frontier in the fasting adventure um, it's a whole other domain of this territory that I'm exploring which is a strange kind of territory. It's it's an inner territory. It's inside your body and and your your whole life, your 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 body mind complex, for want of a better word. And it's like a going inwards. And I can see why down through the ages it was a practice much loved by mystics, sages, um probably shamans, uh, and in fact the bit of reading that I've done since last talking to you guys uh, convinces me that in every culture, in every um, tribal culture, including our own, and uh, if you want to include you know, the Judeo-Christian if you, if, if you want to in, include the European, sort of Western European rationalist tradition under the, under the uh, Judeo-Christian tradition, which is its kind of genesis, its progenitor, then of course you don't have to look very far to find evidence of fasting in the, in the, um, in the, the Hebraic, in the Hebrew scriptures, in the Christian scriptures. If Jesus Christ existed at all, and there's a growing body of biblical scholars who say that he didn't, but if he did, then he was certainly not what he said he was, which was God and, you know, or the Son of God or whatever. He said he was the Son of Man, that wonderfully um, ambiguous term. But his early disciples quickly booted him up the scale, the, um, the ontological scale to a sort of a godhead. But anyway, <clears throat> I digress. If he existed at all, he was a man, and what's reported of that man is that he went out, just prior to his ministry, he went out into the desert. So it wasn't just into some date palm grove <laughs> with, you know, lots of shade and uh, lots of water around. He went out into a desert and did 40 days, 40 nights fasting immediately on completion of which he launched his ministry and as the record of the bible has it went on to 
you know, he spake as none before him had said, had said to, you know, he said things and spoke in such a way that unlike anyone before him had, you know, this was what his uh, doltish um, plodding um, disciples said of him. So he created a bit of a storm, if indeed he existed. But it's interesting, isn't it? You know, that he's this dude um, who launches his career and his so-called miracles. I don't for one minute believe that he performed any miracles. But if he, if he, if, if the record we have of him indicates that there was some man like that, and there were many, there were many in first century Palestine, you know, um, you know, there's no way that Jesus Christ was, if he existed, was um, the only one of his kind. That you know, it was it was virtually a tradition in in first century Palestine to be a wandering um, uh, messianic uh, character who pointed to you know the coming kingdom of ki kingdom of God and um, claimed uh, messiahship. So. Um, uh, in that in that uh, clamour of um, sort of prophetic voices, some air quotes there. I can't be bothered. Well, I can't do the other air quote. <laughs> um, Clyde, cut it out. There's Clyde, my dog, who's getting very territorial because there's a dog about a hundred metres away, and he's likely to jump the creek, which is just over there and it's very oily and muddy and I'm not going to let him do that. So, um, look, I'm going to make this a, a brief one and end it here. This is just to relaunch the channel and hopefully um, keep a record uh, of this, my second attempt at the complete fast. And uh, so, yeah, I don't think I'll be doing daily updates, but definitely min minimum of one a week. And I plan to, if all things, if things go, go to plan, uh, I plan to be doing about seven or eight, possibly nine weeks, because I, I want to get right through all the fat that I've got, which is not a lot. And in fact, I'm quite proud of myself. I went from 98 kilos at the beginning of this week down to 88. So I'm actually the slimmest I've been since uh, about 10 years ago. Actually, not quite. Ten years ago, I got down to 78, um, but I'm on the way down. So, yeah, 10 kilos in one week. Five kilos of that will be basically um, what's in your colon and fluid. The other five will be fat that I've lost. Um, so, um, yeah, I'll keep you up to date on how that's all going and uh, any little insights that I glean uh, on my little journey. Um, uh, share them with you on a on a week, at least a weekly basis. Okay, best. Bye.